Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm aiming at Jupiter slash Jewel and it turns out that we are only 41 days uh, to a Jewel transfer window or Jupiter transfer window. Actually the angle is about the same for Jewel and Jupiter between uh, Kerbin slash Earth and the gas giants. So yep I'm just gonna time warp to that and we don't have any contracts to do at Jewel slash Jupiter. Uh, we do have contracts for Mars uh, and technically Bop and Gilly uh, available, but that's all around here. Uh, there was a Minmus slash, uh, I think there's Uranus uh, contract, but that that's the only one for the gas giants. So if we decide to aim at Jupiter, we're going to be doing so without any funding. So that's a downside. On the upside, it'll be interesting, and uh, we have a lot of development to do, and it's good to try it out. Probably the first few tries were not going to be very successful anyway, so that is the thing. And besides, it's something different. Uh, the Moon and Mars have been causing me trouble. Uh, looking, setting our sights a little bit further might uh, give me a little bit of a, a boost at this point. But anyway, so let me time warp through this, and I'll show you the rocket I've built. I've uh, spent most of the time allotted for making this video building the rocket, so the video might end up being a little bit short. But, uh, well, new rocket, so that should be interesting. Okay, so here we have the Jupiter probe on the Shani 1, and Shani is the Hindi name for Saturn, uh, ironically, since we're going to Jupiter, but the name for Jupiter is a little bit more difficult to pronounce, so I went with Shani since it's, uh, well, it's also a pleasant sounding name. In any case, my goal here was to maximize delta V as much as possible. And so, lots of differences between this and uh, previous rockets. Uh, in particular, first of all, we have the M1 here. Actually, that should be M1SL, darn it. Sea uh, level, because if you take a look at the M1, uh, we have here uh, the regular one only has 250 sea level ISP. And that's the same for these others. It's only the M1SL that has 310. So we need that 310 if we're going to fire it uh, on launch. And so that is what we're going to do. Uh, let me see if that changes the balance any. Um, let's see. Might allow us to make this stage bigger. Yeah, it does. Okay, that's th that's our limit. My goal was to hit the limit of the avionics, as you can see. I could have added more avionics to go beyond 1,500 tons plus the stuff that we have for the t uh, core up top, but uh, the problem with that is that the game would crash whenever I tried to load it, or at least bring it to the launch pad. So, um, yeah, this is still basically the limit, and the way I've uh, sort of added more Delta V is not only by using the M1, but also we've got F1As as our boosters instead of SRBs. That This will create a little bit more lag, but it will uh, give us more delta V. And you can see we have 22,500 meters per second. Is that enough? Uh, tough to say. Depends on how you look at it. Um, we might need some assist in the Jupiter system. Uh, from Jupiter itself, probably, we should be able to get help in terms of slowing down but we'll, we obviously can't dip into the atmosphere and aerobrake that would be dangerous but we'll have to see because I, I haven't been there um, well uh, there was a Voyager-ish mission um, where I tried to get a probe to Neptune in 1.0.4 and that worked out better that used a slingshot around Jupiter that was another thing okay so yeah so not much experience with Jupiter and so let's go from top to bottom by the way, uh, just for you to know, I whenever I go through the rocket like this, I do have to restart the game before trying to launch it, otherwise it wouldn't work. Anyway, I've unlocked a new probe part, and uh, that is this surveyor core. It costs uh, 80000 to unlock it, and the benefit of it is that it allows you to control vessels of up to one ton, and it has its, uh, what you call it, uh, low power mode, 0.8 watts instead of 160 watts. You can see 9.6 charge per minute for a ton versus our next best probe which was uh, basically half of that but weighs more. You can see the mass is 0.18 which 
whereas a severe core is just 0.12. So that's a plus. And that's much better than the early controllable core, which, uh, if you work out the math, is uh, not as efficient. In fact, its low power mode is worse than this one's, even though this one carries five times more. So the actual upper probe is just this part here. And we've got, of course, a one kilo newton thruster here. Um, that is the max tech level for it. And we're using Aerozine 50 and N204 throughout because that is what the lunar module descent engine uses. Oh, this should be a J. I gotta get the variance right. Okay, so that's a J. And that boosts our uh, Delta V bit. Okay, so let's save. All right, so uh, this works uh, similarly. Th these are the antennae to, uh, you know, communicate back home. This has the Commutron 16s, which will communicate with this part of the probe. So all of this has to get to the Jupiter system. And then this will go around to the other, uh, to the moons. That's the intention anyway. Now, you can see uh, the probe core here is actually recessed in here. It's the Agena avionics package. I put the solar panels over it. And so that's how that's arranged. And obviously, we are very serious about solar power this time. So this is all facing the sun. And so these solar panels will be facing that way. And we'll point to the sun this part first. So that's the goal here. And we have plenty of communication. Very importantly, we are not, uh, and this is also to maximize the delta v, we are not putting the Saturn instrumentation unit on. We will have to maintain communications properly. Uh, so the Saturn instrumentation unit is on this stage, but all of the transfer stage here does not have it, so it's not going to be guzzling power from it. This actually has a tiny little core here, a, a early guidance unit, which uh, in this case is our best bet. It's this one here. And that's to allow 45 tons of control, which uh, takes care of all the rest. And again, everything's been maximized as much as I could. It's got a little battery here, uh, plenty of charge for it, because we don't have solar panels on this part portion here. Uh, you can see the delta V of this stage is 4,953. And I know uh, some people ask about uh, using just two RL10s instead of four. I'll tell you, A, I don't have the patience for that kind of burn. B, it only adds 49 meters per second. I tried. I uh, put two on, and I put four on, and it turns out the difference was about 49 meters per second. That's not worthwhile. Not if I'm going to be waiting another 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Another point that got brought up in the comments is, why not use RTGs? Well, the answer is very simple. We don't have RTGs. We have not unlocked RTGs. Not only have I not unlocked RTGs, but I have no idea what technology actually contains RTGs. Which is a little bit frustrating because, of course, um, well, uh, RTGs would be a natural thing to use for a Jupiter mission. And uh, besides that, they were developed by the time Apollo came around. Apollo, we have all the Apollo stuff. We even have Apollo landing legs and all the engines, all the stuff for Apollo but not the RTG. We don't have an RTG. So that's, you know, disappointing. And so we can't use RTGs. We have to rely on solar power, which sucks. I mean, acknowledged. Um, probably the RTGs would be very expensive though. But then again, with an 180,000 fund launch, this is not exactly cheap. Um, I really wish we had a contract for this. This is very expensive. Uh, and it's probably not going to work the first time, so it's going to be tough for us going forward. But, you know, while we're here, I might as well give it a go. So, RL-10s, and then we have the Saturn instrumentation unit down here, with a battery of its own, by the way. It's got a battery up there. Okay, so it's got that. And then we have J-2s, two of them, so that's similar to what we have. It's actually a J-2S. So, J-2S is here and separation rockets and uh, other rockets and such and orientation thrusters and Aerozine 50 and N204 again all the way through is Aerozine 50 and N204 and then finally the M1 stage okay so and the boosters so yeah that's about the size of everything let's get the final reading since I reconfigured the the upper stages, let's see what the actual 
Delta V is 22,553 is what we're working with. So, yeah, is that enough? Well, I can tell you to get to Jupiter and slow down manually takes at least 13,000. So, and since we're not going to be error breaking, uh, we are talking about launching takes about 9,500. Getting there and slowing down takes 13,000. That's all of what we've got here. So, yeah. Tough to say. Uh, we probably need more margin. But I can't really build a bigger rocket. So that's, that's where we're, that's, that is where we're at. We will be trying to relight the J2s. So that stage is going to be relit. If you do the math, there's about uh, 5,600 between the M1 and its boosters. So we're looking at burning about uh, 3,800 from the J2 stage and then another thousand to start us on our way to our target. And then this stage and that stage will complete the burn for Jupiter. And then that stage, I mean, and then this stage will arrive at Jupiter, this stage will have to do the slow down and hitting some world or another. Hopefully it'll hit some world or another while it's still in range of this stage to relay the communications back is sort of the idea. It's possible the whole thing will run out of electric charge before we even get there. The thing I'm relying on is the probe cores. The Agena core is not going to go into low power mode but uh, this one we need to go into low power mode. Yep. Okay. So with that, I am going to restart so that it doesn't crash during the launch, and then we will launch this. We are already at the correct phase angle with Jupiter, so that's all set. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad, and I'm going to have to time up a little bit to get our relative inclination right. Now, you know, to what degree we need to line up uh, is a fair question, but I'd rather do so than find myself caught unaware by by my orientation with things. Now I haven't used Transfer Window Planner and that is because the last time I used it, it didn't give me the best possible transfer to Mars. We were going too fast. So I think I'll just go with my own my own devices on this one and we'll see how that works out. Probably not so well but now I didn't mention it. The probe's only instruments are a temperature scan and a radiation experiment. So we, we're traveling light here to maximize our delta V. Of course, if it turns out we need a whole lot more delta V, I'll have to try and get a larger rocket. Oh, I needed to get the electric charge pumping. Ooh, that was a bad shake. Electrical on. We don't need to, uh, to pump anything else, I don't think. Oh, well, the auction could be... Let's toggle pump anyway. Let's top it off. Yeah, we've got oxygen and hydrogen to do. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, that should be good enough. We'll see how this goes. New rocket and all that. Don't know how it'll be. But okay, throttle is up, SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Okie dokie, off we go. Oh, uh, I need to institute a roll, darn it. So that doesn't go this way. I want it to go flat, of course. Uh, a little bit of delta V wasted there. It's got pretty good TWR through the booster stage. Lost a bit of electric charge, we didn't really top that off, I guess. Okay, well, the first uh, tight moment will be with the decouplers. You know how the decouplers overheat as we get close to separation. I've deliberately kept the booster stage short instead of making it a particularly long stage. The F1As could burn for much longer than I've got them going for. And the reason I kept them short is to avoid the decouplers overheating, but we'll have to see whether that works out or not. 
Okay, 25 seconds. We do have separatrons on the boosters this time. No close separation. Hopefully the separatrons are in a good place though. Okay, I think I'll just keep it here. No point taking any risks. 12 seconds. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. I can't throttle down these engines. It's not showing the indicator here. Oh boy. Ah, fudge. Procedural real fuels tank burned up from overheating. Well, I, I think, well no, uh, it says the radio decoupler collided with the procedural real fuels tank, but the tank burned up from overheating. Which tanks? I mean, which tank burned up from overheating? I don't know. That's very weird. And very expensive, by the way. Uh, let's see what we can do with this. I don't know. Uh, what's left? Um, here. Mm, yeah, well, let's try it. I don't know what else to do. I mean, I can't just let this go. Okay, well, I don't know if we can get to orbit with this thing, but we might as well try. That's weird. I don't, I mean... You might have, you guys might have to remind me if I've ever gotten a procedural real fuels tank exploding like that, and if so, why? But that is very frustrating. Oh, okay. What exploded there? Um. Oh, F one series collided in the egg shaped fairing. But it looks like the fairing is uh, is still solid. So it was the core. It must have been the core tank then, the one connected to the M1. The one the tank connected to the M1 must have overheated, because then the boosters would have gone forward, and uh, that's why we smashed into the F1 booster at that point. Well, that's my theory anyway. Well, we're gonna have a heck of a time trying to make orbit, but that's my goal right now. We'll try and plot for Jupiter. If it turns out that Jupiter is a problem, we'll try and come up with some alternate alternate uh, solution. Well, it's very tough to figure out how to solve a problem like that, because, I mean, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. The overall stage configuration is very, I mean, it's uh, pretty much what we've been using. I mean, it's just tanks. Uh, it's just a straight tank, cylinder, cylindrical tank, uh, cone-shaped tank, and then the engine, right? I mean, that's what the M1 portion is like. There's not much tweaking I can do to that. Obviously, the whole point of having the M1 is to have it burn for a substantial amount of time. It doesn't do any good if we shorten the stage to a point where it has to be expended faster than the boosters. Why are there only three here? That's not right. Did one get damaged? Yeah, uh, I think we lost one. Yeah, there should be one here. So I can't even fi I can't fire these to relight, but we don't need to relight this stage anyway, so that's fine. Let's just move those away so that I don't make a mistake with them. Okay. Uh, let's dump fairing. I think uh, we can just lose that mass. Hopefully, it won't collide with anything. We've got four parts this time to hopefully solve that problem. Stay clear, stay clear. Okay. 
Let's see, Ashing One solo panels? Hardly useful right now. Let me retract those again. Ashing Two is some antennae, so we'll we'll set set those out so that they help with communication. No point losing communication at this point. Okay, so good news is it looks like we're going to make it to orbit thanks to the higher thrust weight ratio during this phase of this stage with one and a half minutes left. Downside is we're probably going to need to spend a lot of time trying to burn the RL-10 stage. Thank goodness we don't have just two of them and we actually have four of them there. Otherwise we might not have been able to make it. But uh, yeah, we might have just enough thrust weight ratio to make that work out for us. I'm currently building up my time to apoapsis to give us some time there. How much time do we need? Uh, well, we're probably going to have to burn half of this stage out. Best to estimate about six minutes. So we'll be going past apoapsis and start going down, sort of, before we get done with this. Well, we better have communication with some stuff, because we're going to be losing the Saturn instrumentation unit soon. It's not going to be local control anymore. Well, let's get all the solar panels out, and all the antennae out. We're in space anyway. I guess we really don't need those on the probe yet. Okay, here we go. Set. And ignition. Okay. Well, this is gonna take a while. We still don't have the RL-10 B2s, by the way. There's still RL-10 A3-3A. See, should I tune to one of the high fluting satellites? Probably it's not necessary. Probably good already. Okay, here we go. We are passing apoapsis here. Not too much longer to burn. We're obviously much higher than uh, we normally would be, but that's alright. This was an uh, attempt to rescue this mission after all. We don't need the periapsis side to be too high. We'll get it to 200 kilometers. There we go. 350 by 210. And so we've got 2,416 left in this stage all together. Well, it says 10,000 there. So 10,000 is not bad, but let's see actually uh, how much we have just in the these two stages. We've got 6,800 and then 3,200 in the final stage. Remember, the final stage does not have long-range antennae. So, yeah, we can't be sending it out all on its own. We can't complete the Jupiter transfer with it, otherwise we'll just lose communication with it. So either we make a Jupiter transfer with the 6800 here and let this portion coast along with that other portion, or we're not going to Jupiter. So let's see what I can plot out and we'll work from there. Okay, well, it looks like it's theoretically possible. Uh, we've got a transfer that will cost 6,472.8 meters per second. And it goes like this. It hits Jupiter right at Jupiter's node, uh, ascending node, I think it is, uh, with us. And so, yeah, and even better, if we really get this, we will also get what is called a Tylo encounter, but is in fact a Ganymede encounter in uh, two years and 91 days. Now, of course, what our electric charge will hold out or anything like that is an uh, open question, but if we can do this, then that would be quite impressive, and we will still retain the stage with the communications, and maybe, maybe it's possible to get the thing to slow down into Ganymede orbit, the final probe. I'm not sure, though. Uh, right now, I don't have enough patched conics to see what happens after this encounter, you know, it just stops there, it doesn't show me what goes next. So I've got all the patch conics I can get. And probably it's too finicky for me to actually see the details anyway. So we'll try for this, and we'll try to hit Ganymede. 
Um, that would be quite a, an amazing salvage of this particular operation. Okay, so uh, on that note, I'm going to turn SmartASS off and slowly turn myself to the maneuver node, though I'm going to lock the upper tanks now. Okay, good. For a sec there, it made me worried that it, uh, I wasn't firing the thrusters. Uh, I don't think there's a tank in that probe. No, there isn't. Were we able to transfer power yet? I want to send some power up if I can. Well, we might as well use up the, the maneuvering fuel in this bit. It's not going to do us any good later on. So only 3 minutes and 19 seconds. We'll do that part and then we'll go around and then we'll do the rest uh, with this descent engine. Because that's going to take a while, I think. This Delta V is pretty good. Oh, no, not Delta V. Thrust weight ratio is pretty good. We can't see it here right now because uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, 0.45. Well, it could be worse. Um, well, it might take a while. But yeah, we'll do that when we go around. Okay, well, we're getting close. Probably go a little bit further. Alright, starting around here maybe. Let's have a computer assisted node focus. And all right, let's have the settling rockets do it, and then we'll burn. Okay, the last uh, 42 seconds it looks like, and I have to be a little bit careful because our electric charge isn't great. Uh, the amount of charge we have in here is five hours if we want to keep this stage handy to orient ourselves using that guidance unit. If we don't we could separate it off and just use this portion in which case we won't have as much drain because we won't have to worry about that guidance unit. Looks like that might be the thing to do. We do have a reaction wheel on top here. We could just wait for it to do its thing. Okay, uh, we don't need all of the... Well, I guess uh, since those tanks are locked, we can just use up... We're only using up this fuel here. That's fine. And I'm gonna fire the Ullage rockets there. Mm, if I can. Alright. So after I use up this fuel, we'll set. Okay, that's that. Throttle down and separation. Okay, well, not much of a bang there, but let's unlock these tanks. Oh, uh, no, no, uh, no, stop that. Stop. Just, uh, and we'll caps lock that for now. Okay, so those tanks are open, and we'll, uh, move forward just a little bit in a very fine tuned way. Okay, we are off. We have a little bit more power to work with and of course uh, really a lot more power once we get into the daylight okay let us proceed okay yeah charging up fine let me get the exact numbers that we've got in here so that I can replot Oh, well, that's no good. That's the original plot. I want what's left over. Um, presumably, it's proportional. So let me do the math. Okay, so here's the replot. And did I say something about Ganymede being our encounter target? Well, now it's Europa slash Elu, it looks like. Yep, that is the situation. Well, let's hope we hit that, but it's a little bit finicky, so we'll see. Anyway, our probe is recharging a bit. We could probably recharge faster, but this will be alright for now. And that's when the game crashed. Thankfully, it seems like our plot still remains, so we're still... We're still aiming at Europa this time, so I don't have to do that again. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if I have enough time to do this burn before I have to get going with other things. 8 minutes and 50 seconds. I guess I'll, I'll try it. Let's, let's go for it. 
I won't leave you in suspense about whether this part works out or not. Okay. I think we should get going now. Um, let's make sure we're pointed at the node. Up. Oh, caps lock is no longer on. Let's get that on. And forward. I'm, well, let's caps lock off. There we go. Forward and uh, let me activate engine like this. So, throttle and active. Okay. So off we go. Now I'm going to uh, target turbine slash earth with this antenna. What the heck? Hold on. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Um, oh, okay, that's right. Alright, just making sure everything is sensible. Alright. Now, I don't know if that one reflectron has got to be enough to communicate from Jupiter, so we're going to have to activate another one uh, when we get closer, but we'll go with just one antenna until we get to beyond the orbit of Mars because we definitely won't need any more until then because we've used one antenna all the way up to Mars I think alright well I'll come back to you once this burn is done okay we are at the node right now and it looks like we're halfway through the burn so as far as accuracy on that score I think we're doing pretty well Yep, uh, obviously you want to do half of the delta V ahead of the node and half after the node and it looks like we're spot on there. Hopefully that means we'll be headed correctly to Europa. We'll find out. Now, of course, uh, one good thing about the... Uh oh, this... Oh boy, hold on. Something was going wrong here. I was about to say, one good thing about the descent module engine is that it does throttle. I didn't realize I was going to need to use it so soon. Okay. Okay, we have a dual encounter of some sort, it looks like, right there. I mean, Jupiter encounter, of course. Okay, there's that orbit coming in. Uh-oh, it disappeared. That's not good. Really don't like it disappearing like that. Um... Well, we have multiple relights on this engine, definitely, so I'm just going to turn it off and use some RCS to fine-tune things. If oh, there we go. If possible. Okay, are we... Well, we might be a little bit off. You know, let's just get rid of that. Oh, that's pretty far off. Hold on. Okay, I think I'm getting closer now. There we go. Well, says there's an encounter. I guess we'll have to believe it. Uh-oh. Just taking it off, decided to get rid of the encounter. That's not right. Really? Really? Okay, stay there. Uh, of course it's not going to stay there. And we eventually have to turn so that we face the sun properly. Anyway, let's see where the sun is. Okay, well right now we're good. As long as we're time warping, we have more than six times the, the electric charge we need. We're, uh, we're mostly facing the sun, so this is pretty close to our optimal, not quite there though. These two solar panels could be facing the sun, so uh, we could get a little bit more juice than we've got right now. But that's about the situation. And uh, we've lost the encounter again. We'll have to adjust it once we get closer. Okay, well, I don't know how good this is going to be for us. I'm guessing that the electric charge problem is going to be a problem. But this is our first attempt and we had problems. So if we can salvage anything out of this, that'd be great. Alright, so on this note, uh, 
I'll say that we will find out what happens with this probe in the next episode and I'll also have to figure out what to do to recoup funds because of course there was no contract associated with this so probably some sort of satellite launch in the next episode is, pro is on order but with that I'll say thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time